Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel back. I just wanted to share with everyone the findings that I have made with regards to the experimental S-cell. Uh, I'll be performing a couple of demonstrations here for you, but the first conclusion is obviously adding a chemical to the distilled water to create an electrolyte increases the conductivity of the solution. Potassium hydroxide is a very good, very good choice as long as you uh, run it through a bubbler and and uh, recondense it back into a liquid form. Uh, sodium hydroxide, which is apparently more readily available in my area, also works, but uh, with the downside of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide as some of the byproducts. And it should be noted that th it will only increase the conductivity of the electrolyte solution to a point. I found that uh, after I added s a certain amount, the um, amount of inc increase in the conductivity did not go up at all. Uh, in fact, it was counterproductive. Temperature increase of the cell increases conductivity of the electrolyte as well, but only to a practical point, obviously, because you don't want it to boil. Um, so for the same voltage across the plates as the temperature rises, current will increase as well. This is why you can run into a runaway condition where you need to actually cool the electrolyte solution to keep it at a, at a relatively constant point. The gas production, as it turns out, is relative to amperage and plate surface area only. When uh, when the solution is cold, it requires more voltage to create the same amperage. When the solution is warm, it takes less voltage to create the same amperage. I conducted a series of tests today and uh, proved that point. I was able to produce exactly 500 milliliters of gas in 45 seconds, which is two-thirds of a liter per minute. Uh, that fact, that figure did not vary even though uh, the the solution was warmer right well, all I did was back down the voltage to maintain a steady 10 amp state to to generate that amount of gas um, in order to get more current into the cell there are two things that are that will be required a you need more plate surface area and b a closer spacing of the plates obviously for experimental purposes a quarter of an inch is very nice because you can look into it and you can see very easily what's going on but for for a practical cell, the spacing will probably have to be about half as much, and I will have uh, in my next cell three times the plate surface area, six times or one sixth the the leakage current. It's going to be a very good cell. I can't wait to see the production numbers. So I wanted to show you. I have um, I have um, resealed the top of the tank. There is a now another layer of acrylic underneath the lid that is glued to the edge of the tank. Then I have a piece of uh, weather stripping with the, e with the uh, edges sealed with polyurethane adhesive and the top lid assembled to the tank held in place simply with a couple of heavy rubber bands and that's all that's needed now to create a very tight seal to the top of the tank and, gi and give me very accurate gas production measurements out the, out the tube. So. Uh, with that, I'm, I'm all hooked up. This device right here, you can see, is just a heat sink you can't see inside. I'll try to give you some close-ups in a minute. There's a full wave bridge in here with a filter capacitor and my, my output current is being taken off from these alligator clips going to the back and through the meter. My stopwatch is here. I'm just going to wait for, instead of, instead of trying to hit the button, I'm going to wait for an opportune moment to start the current and hold the hold the bottle in place from floating away. So I'll start right about now. Okay. Maybe I won't. Would help if I plug it in. Alright, try take two. Okay. Ramp it up to ten amps. And I sort of have to hold it in place. You can see the bubbles rising. We're at 15 seconds. Thirty seconds.
40. Forty-five seconds, and gas is now bubbling out of the neck of the bottle. So, this cell has been warmed up for quite some time, um, and it generated 500 milliliters of gas. I'm going to let that escape. Generated 500 milliliters of gas in 45 seconds. A uh, little earlier today, I detonated. 500 milliliters of HHO and you can see what it did to the bottle ripped it apart quite nicely that's a pretty good shot right there and blew the cap right off the neck right off the neck of the bottle um, did sound like a 12 gauge going off and all I did to, to detonate it was uh, drill a hole in the cap just large enough to fit the end of a zip cord with an AC plug on the end of it, put this on the end of a long extension cord and took one strand of wire, jumpered it across, fed it through the cap, assembled it to the to the bottle while it was in the, in the in the water so that I didn't lose any gas, set it up outside, plugged it in at the far end and kaboom. Lots of fun. I'm sure the neighbors were wondering what that was. There you have it. Uh, Next video, well, let me see. Hold on a second. I want to show you one more thing. This is the heat sink with my full wave bridge capacitor mounted to it. You can see the AC cord going to the input of the full wave bridge and my positive terminal connected to the negative or to the positive of the capacitor. I'm going to reconnect the negative and I'm going to come over to the top of the tank, show you the collection tube that runs to the center of the tank at the top of the cell and the collection tube is attached to the back side of the fitting where I extract the gas so as this sloshes around it won't have a tendency to suck up any of the electrolyte in the process um, with the frame that has been built you can see the gasket now around the edge and the frame that has been glued to the top of the electrolyzer tank the opening is large enough for me to set the plate cavity inside, but putting it, taking it apart and putting it back together now is a little bit like assembling a, uh, a ship in a bottle. It takes a little bit more time, but it's definitely worth the effort because now I have a good seal. And with it connected, I'll just give you a quick demo. There's our production again. That's, that's what the production looks like at 10 amps. I like the fizz that it makes. And I'm a little reluctant. You see the surface tension, the bubbles, oxygen bubbles and the oxyhydrogen build, building up. A um, little reluctant to ignite that, knowing that some of the gas is now trapped underneath the lip of the frame. And uh, there's the tank from the side. So I'll shut the current off. Bubbles rise, production stops. And there you have it. It is the S cell complete. Uh, I believe I've taken all the data that I need from it. If uh, anybody has ideas for electrolyte solutions, share them. We'll try them out. We now have a common common playground on which to to test and reach conclusions. Zero fossil fuel. Signing out for now. Next time next installment hopefully will be with this unit or a similar unit installed in my car.